Welcome to our lecture online. So now for something a little bit more challenging. Here we're going to find the electric field due to a line charge. But what's different here is that typically we place the point directly above the line, but when you draw a line from the point to the line charge, then you usually end up at the very middle so that one of the directions cancels out. We're not having that situation here. We're putting the point above the edge of the charge, of the line charge right here, so that there's no symmetry. That means you're going to have an X and a Y component to the electric field due to the charges on this line right here with length L. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to do this in two parts. First, we're going to find the electric field component in the X direction, and then we're going to find the electric field component in the Y direction on the next video. Keeping in mind that the, large, the line charge density is equal to lambda, and so when we take a small element on that line charge, how much charge do we have in that small element, dq? It's simply the, line den the charge density times the distance of that small segment, which is dx. So simply, the the charge density on the line times the x, that's the amount of charge you have in that small little piece of the line. And then we're going to calculate the electric field in the x direction, and then later on the electric field in the y direction to that small little piece on the line. And then we're going to integrate over the entire line to get the total value for the electric field. So first in the x direction, so we'll go ahead and write the down part one is we're going to do the x direction first. So. Notice that we have the height here, let's call the height y, and y is going to be constant, and then the horizontal distance here is x, and then let's call this here r, the hypotenuse. And of course, we can see that r squared is going to be equal to uh, y squared plus x squared, and notice that in this case the y is constant, but the x is not. Okay, then let's find the de here, de the magnitude of the small DE caused by the small segment right here. So that's going to be equal to K times the charge DQ divided by the distance R squared. That's simply the equation we use for the electric field. And then since DQ is lambda times dx, we can write this as K times lambda times dx divided by R squared is now going to be, uh, I'll go ahead and write it as X squared plus Y squared. There we go. Okay. But now we want to find the x component of that. So now we want dE in the x direction, which is going to be equal to dE times, notice that the angle is opposite to the x direction here, so it would be times the sine of theta. And the sine of theta can be defined as follows, right? So we have the sine of theta, which is equal to the adjacent, no, the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, so in this case the opposite side is x, and the hypotenuse would be equal to r. And so it would be x divided by the square root of x squared plus y squared, like this. Okay, so this can then be written as, uh, we have k lambda dx over x squared plus y squared, that's for the DE. Now the sine of theta is going to be written as X divided by the square root of X squared plus Y squared. So if we multiply that together, we get the following. We get DEX is equal to K times lambda, those are all constants, times X DX divided by the quantity X squared plus Y squared to the 3 halves power. And since we have an x in the denominator, I'm thinking of something here. If we're not going to find e sub x, that's going to be equal to the integral of dE sub x, which is the integral of what we have on the right side. Now we're going to integrate from 0 to L. That's the length of the strip of charge, or the, the line of charge. And notice we have an x dx, and we have an x squared to the 3 halves in the denominator. So this can be written as k times lambda times the integral of x times the quantity x squared plus y squared to the minus 3 halves dx. And notice that if this is u, the du would be 2x dx. We need a 2 there. So we're going to multiply times 2 and divide by 2 so we can integrate it. 
Notice that the limits of integration are from 0 to L. And so we can go ahead and integrate that. So now we have E in the x direction is equal to k lambda divided by 2, 2x, and dx will disappear. Now this will be x squared plus y squared, x squared plus y squared. Add 1 to the exponent to the minus 1 half divided by the new exponent minus 1 half. And we're going to evaluate that from 0 to L. Now notice that the 1 over 2 and the 1 over 2 will cancel, but the negative will not. So this will give us uh, negative k times lambda times, when we plug in the upper limit. Now remember that y was a constant, so the upper limit will get L squared plus y squared to the minus 1 half. Uh, you know what? I don't like negative 1 half exponents. I'm going to rewrite this as negative k over that, so 1 over the quantity x squared plus y squared to the 1 half power from 0 to L. Don't like those negative exponents. All right, so now continue over here, because we're running out of room. That's why we're doing this in two parts. So now we have e to the x, or e sub x. The x component of the electric field is equal to minus k lambda. Plugging in the upper limit, we get 1 over L squared plus Y squared to the 1 half power minus, plug in the lower limit, this would go to 0. We have 1 over Y to the 1 half. Oh, I forgot my squared here. So we have, when X goes to 0, we have 1 over Y squared to the 1 half power is simply 1 over Y. So minus 1 over Y like this. And then finally, since we have a negative sign, we can bring that in here and switch this around. We have E in the X direction is equal to um, k lambda times 1 over y minus 1 over the square root, uh, 1 over l square plus y square to the 1 half power. And then finally, if we want to write this in a vector format, since it's pointing in the negative direction, we can say that e in the x direction as a vector is equal to, again, we need a negative sign, which will flip this around. So I have k y 1 over L squared plus Y squared to the 1 half power minus 1 over Y in the X direction. And so this is how we write it in vector format. Again, why did I switch this around? Because since the vector is pointing in a negative direction, we need to put a negative in front to get rid of that. I've simply flipped this around again and wrote it like that. And that is the X component of the electric field due to that line charge which line charge density lambda and of course on the next video we're going to do it for the y direction we want the y component and then the two components combined will give us the electric field of that line charge so you can see that if it's not symmetrical things get a little bit more complicated we need a little more work to get the answer but that is how it's done now let's see if that's right <laughs> and let's see here okay hey how, do, how come I have it the other way around? Oh no, it's right. Correct. All right, it's good.